and you can let the software do the calculations and then double check the calculations with the formula, which allows you to, to kind of go back and forth and, and try to understand what is happening and then, and then plug it into the software and, and, and see what is happening. So this is a formula that will actually create a whole worksheet in Excel, a worksheet that we can use to learn, but it's also a great worksheet that I, I used uh, in practice uh, so that I double check my numbers. I still use it when I double check, you know, tax returns, meaning if you're doing the data input into tax software, for example, because there's no double entry accounting system, you might want to have a, a worksheet that's also in a formula format and do the data input into that as well. So that you have, and maybe even if you have a firm, have two different people do the data input, one into the software, one into the tax, into the formula in Excel. And that way, if those two things reconcile, then you could, you could say, okay, I feel pretty comfortable about that. Or you can look at, you can look at the differences and it'll try to, it'll start to drill down on, on why they're different. And, and you'll get into these phase outs and stuff like that uh, as to what the differences are, which you can then understand a little bit better. And you want to understand things better because the software might be able to do the calculations but you as the tax preparer still have to explain it to people, right? So even if, even if you can do the data input without understanding, which I wouldn't really recommend because then you can't tell if something is wrong, but even if you were able to do that, it, it's gonna come up that the, the client's gonna say, well, why, why is that the case or something like that? And you can't just say, well, because the soft, that's what the software did, right? I mean, you could, but that doesn't sound, doesn't give a whole, doesn't ring with a whole lot of confidence when you're the client. So what, an approach that we will take is we'll try to look at, break down this income tax formula and then concentrate on each line uh, of it because, because each line of this formula has a lot of things included within it. So for example, income, question, what's included in income, what isn't included in income. So that's a whole section in and of itself but when we visualize the formula, that's the question we're asking. If someone's saying, I, I received, I found $100 on the ground, do I have to, what, what is that? Well, that's a, that's a question about the income line and what will that do? Now, in a broad sense, this formula, you can think of it as basically a funny income statement. So we'll go over it multiple times, but we have an income tax. So we have an income statement and you would think it would just be income minus expenses would get you down here to taxable income. So this is basically the income statement format that would get you to taxable income. That, if, that would be the general idea. You'd think you'd be basically done there, then you just multiply it times the tax rate. But it actually gets a lot confusing even after you get to the taxable income. Why? Because we don't have a flat tax. We've got a progressive tax. So the tax rate's confusing. And then we don't just have an income statement. We have deductions, which are kind of like expenses and then we also have credits that we deal with, which is a whole nother thing, right? A whole nother kind of animal, which is now below the tax calculation. And then we also have to deal with the payments because the government wants their money as the time passes. Therefore, we have to deal with the payments and how the payments were made. Were they withheld from W-2 forms, 1099 forms? Did they make estimated tax payments? Now that's, it's a little bit more complicated than that because you have income, the income statement's not just minus expenses. The expenses are in the form of adjustments to income or above the line deductions. That gets you to the adjusted gross income. And then you could take the greater of either the standard deduction or the itemized deduction. So these are kind of like the expenses, right? <laughs> Would get you to net income. And then, and then you have the credits and whatnot. So this formula can, can look a little bit confusing at first, but after we break it down section by section, then I think uh, we'll get a, a we'll get, be able to visualize basically this formula in general, and then we'll work with it uh, in Excel. Once you can visualize it in a formula, you can predict what's going to happen in the software, and then use the software to create the forms to see if what you think should happen did happen. So here's the form uh, 1040. Now you can get the forms on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, and you could just look up form 1040. All the forms are there. The instructions are there. Uh, so, so you have all of that. If you have the software, 
then you can generate forms with the data input on the software as well. So whichever way you want to work with as you as we go through the practice problems, that would be fine. Notice that with the forms, there's a whole lot more detail. So you're probably not visualizing the form unless you have some weird photographic memory. If you talk to most tax people, they're not just visualizing the form oftentimes uh, when they're trying to calculate a scenario, right? They're probably visualizing more of a formula in their mind and approximating what the form is doing. So again, we'll touch in on that as we go through the practice problems. But looking at the forms is of course important because then you can, once you have the formula idea, you can go into the more detailed forms and then start looking at them line by line and seeing what is actually happening, going back from your Excel sheet to the, to the tax return to get a better grasp of what's happening in the more detailed format. And then we have software. Now the software, there's two major softwares. There's like software, the software types, I would say. There's software that is for uh, tax professionals and softwares that is for individuals. So the, the software for tax professionals will typically be uh, a little bit different in the data input. The data input will not be in an interview format, but just in a quick, you have quick fields that you can go to to do the data input a little bit faster. With the individual software, then that type of style of software will typically have like an interview process. So when you do the data input, it's going to ask you questions to try to understand what is happening in a similar way as though you might be in an office with a tax preparer asking you questions to, to try to get the information necessary to pick up the return. Whereas with the, prof with the professional software, the assumption is that the professional is doing that and therefore you want to just do, you want to make the software as easy to do the data input as possible right? You don't want to have to, to redo the interview to do the data input. I just want to do the data input, right? I don't want to go through like a, a half hour interview, step by step, screen by screen, you know, when I'm trying to do the data input. So the professional software is really good for practice problems, because it's really easy to go back and forth from the data input to the forms and see and see the results. Uh, but both both softwares, I would highly recommend using a software at least whenever doing tax preparation because you want the uh, internal control. I'm going to use Lacert primarily here because that's the software I've I've used most. It's uh, it, it, it was bought by QuickBooks. Uh, I mean by not by Quick by Intuit, the owner of QuickBooks, a while back, long time back, I guess now, <laughs> but. Uh, but it's a good software, but there's it, it, there's other softwares that you can use as well. The concept will be similar, but just note that you can kind of categorize your softwares in these two major uh, types of software. If you don't have Lacert, you might be able to, to try a free trial, which we might touch on a little bit more in a, in a later video, just to, and that would be a great tool to be able to practice with. Or you can you can try other softwares as well which should have a similar functionality so we can practice the data input screens will not be exactly the same but you can use them and when we do the practice problems you if you don't have any software you can just simply download the forms from the internal web revenue website uh with the pdf forms and uh follow along with the tax forms on your end that way which can be a useful tool as well so we'll touch in a little bit more on the different softwares in future presentations, I believe.